Hello YouTube, welcome or hopefully welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be looking at how to emulate PlayStation games using RetroArch. This is quite a long video but I have time stamped it so if you're already familiar with RetroArch you can skip straight into the settings in order to get your games to play back at 1080p or 4K. In terms of history, the PlayStation was launched in 1994. Originally Sony started to work with Nintendo in 91 on a new console. When Nintendo pulled the plug on that, Sony decided to carry on with their work. Initially outsold by the Sega Saturn, the PlayStation went on to dominate gaming in the late 90s and really set the standard for all console gaming, even to this day. There are some real classics on the PlayStation, but they do look a bit dated. So in today's video we'll be looking at how you can enhance the graphics up to 1080p or even 4K. It's relatively simple and even with a potato computer you should be able to get a real uplift in the graphics. So let's get cracking. First of all, you're going to need some games. Now as ever, on a YouTube video, I can't possibly tell you where you may obtain them. If only there were a website of a handy guide. Anyway, here in this top folder are my BIOS. And then below that I have two different game formats. One is a bin and queue file in a folder. And the second format is a PBF file. Now these are commonly available, and we can get both to work in RetroArch. We'll come back to those later. The second thing you'll need, of course, is RetroArch. I have a link below to the RetroArch page, so we'll need to go there and download the emulator. It'll take a few seconds to download, and then we'll get cracking. So once you've downloaded RetroArch, you'll just need to click the execute file in your download folder, and then RetroArch will start to install. This doesn't take very long. And now we'll set up RetroArch for the first time. Let's just close that window. So, first thing to do, obviously open it full window. We go. Now, first we need to load the red, first we need to load the emulator core. So we go to online updater, go to core downloader, and then we'll just scroll right down to the bottom until we get to PlayStation. And the emulator we'll be using. is Beetle PSX HW. This is derived from the Mednathan core, I believe, um, but it's an excellent emulator. And there are others you can use. Of course, you may see lots of videos using EPSXE, which is very good. Um, I just personally prefer RetroArch. I think it's slightly more user-friendly. And of course, you can emulate many more consoles and games on this, so it's quite useful to have around. So, as this is a new install, we'll need to go into the controller menu and set up some hotkeys so we can exit out of the games and make adjustments to options or even start new games. So I always advise if you're using a gamepad to use L3 and R3 and that's done. Returning to the main menu, we'll now need to load some games. We'll do this by going to import content, then scan directory and we'll tell RetroArch where to find our games. Now for me, that's a folder on my desktop, but of course you'll know exactly where you've stored all your games. So that can take quite a while to scan the games, I'm just fast forwarding through here. Of course, the more games you've got, the longer it takes. There we go, all 78 games scanned. So we'll return to the main menu, and we should see at the bottom our PlayStation controller. And that means we have some games. But hold on, it's only two games here. We uploaded 78. 
Now, there is a problem with RetroArch, and the roulette will scan the folder and find the PBF games. You won't actually scan them into the system. So in order to do that, you need to, to find an alternative way. And that's to press F5, and that takes you to this RetroArch menu. And then you can go to where you've stored your games in RetroArch, that folder there, which has two games in. And then go to your folder where all your games are, and simply select and drag them into this folder, which I will do eventually. Honestly, I'll get there. Okay, selected. And then dragged. There we go, it's a bulk update. And then they all are now in that folder. So we close down those. And then go back into RetroArch proper. And we should find all of our games sitting in the directory. And there we go, perfect. We also need to put our BIOS into the folders. Now your BIOS go into the systems folder on RetroArch. And I'll just show you where that is here. So copy them from where you're currently storing them. You need to go into your user's drive, whatever your user account is, we set RetroArch up in, and then app data, roaming, RetroArch, and then system. And you just paste them into there. Okay, job done. Let's get playing some games. I think we should start with Tekken. There we are, Tekken 3, perfect. So we just run that. And here we go. Now first time running it will come up in a window, but we'll just set that to be full screen. Lovely. So we'll just dash into some gameplay and then we'll have a look at what we might do to enhance it. Okay, I should have mentioned, of course, that RetroArch will recognise any Xbox controller straight out the box when it's connected. I need to do any work, of course, apart from just, as we've done, set up the hotkeys. As you can see, works perfectly, full speed, just like it used to. But a bit grainy, not quite as smooth and as detailed as you'd expect. Certainly not compared to 2020 games, anyway. Oh, that didn't go to plan. I'm sure it was the bad graphics. Anyway, let's get into setting some new options and trying to make this look a little bit smarter. So, press our L3 and R3 buttons together and come into the options menu. We'll just scroll down here to options and click for a number of different ones we can change. I always set to Vulcan. I have a relatively powerful machine, specs below, but if you're using a potato, Vulcan's a slightly easier um, bit of hardware to run. So make sure your software frame buffer is, is off. In terms of GPU resolution, this is the big one. Now we'll put it onto four times, which will be HD. The original resolution was 270p, 270 times four, 100, 1080 even, HD. Now the rest of these options you can play with, they're not essential, the big one is GPU resolution. But I'll just go through these and I just like to add these because it just makes it a little bit smoother around some of the character animations. So we've got internal color depth to 32, delivering pattern to internal resolution, texture filtering will leave, we'll scroll down here, we'll go down to PGXP opera operation mode, we'll put that to on, we'll put that to memory only, we'll put 
POXP vertex cache to on. Corrective texturing will put to on. You can have FPS, I'll leave that off. Leave the quad hack on default. clock onto 32 times. Now in the BIOS, I've not set this off here, but it's useful to skip the BIOS going forward. I find with these settings that the BIOS gets a bit slow, although the game runs perfectly well. And that's it. So we'll just go back into gameplay, see if it looks different. Now another thing to look at is the controller. The PlayStation controller is the default original PlayStation controller. You can set up a DualShock or an analog controller. That's going to depend on the game. For Tekken 3 it wasn't compatible as that was quite an early release. So you'll have to play about to see whether you can or can't use analog sticks. But if you use either the analog or I would recommend opting for the DualShock, then you'll be able to use your analog, con your analog control sticks. And there we go, 1080p, all those settings, looks a lot smoother. No impact on gameplay, apart from I'm playing a bit better. And there we go, a real enhancement. As I say, play with the settings, you don't need to do all of the adjustments I've made. Certainly the native resolution one will come back to you shortly. All the rest just, I think, for me, just tweak it. But if you have any problems, obviously make sure you go in and out and just tweak for your own computer. So here we are now, having a look at Spyro again at 1080p, looking pretty smooth. You'll have to excuse my gameplay, it's been a while since I played Spyro. Okay, collect rubies, it'll fly around. I think we've seen enough of that. That looks good. That's a really enhancement on what it would look like at 270p. Very smooth. So, a bit of Lara Croft. So here we're starting at 1080p. Already a significant improvement. Obviously I won't go through too much gameplay, just a bit of jumping around but looking really good. Okay, let's have a little play, see what else we might have a look at here. So we'll go back into the options menu. So we'll just pop that back up to native, just to show you what it would have looked like. really quite grainy. You don't realise actually, until you go back to 270p, just how how pixelated it all looks. Okay, and let's have a look at 8 times. Now, 8 times resolution would be 2160p or 4K. Let's have a look. Now, looks great. If I'm honest, the jump from 1080p to 2160p or 4K isn't massive, but you can see it. So if your kit can't handle it, 1080p is fine, but I think you know 4K doesn't seem to be disrupting anything, so why not? Okay, let's move on. I think we've all seen enough of Laura in 4K. I'm sure some of you are at the vinegar strokes already. Here we are starting Gran Turismo in 4K. Looking really smooth, playing really smooth. You can see the difference in the graphics, just... If you try looking at it at 270p and then adjust it, it just looks amazing at this. 
It looks certainly as good as a PlayStation 2 graphics would have looked. I think it looks fantastic. It certainly makes the games more playable and more enjoyable. You can put it on a bigger TV or a bigger screen, it doesn't look out of place. It's certainly worth having a go at. Just demonstrate, here's what it would look like in 270p. Goodness, that's quite a shock, isn't it? I'm just sticking it back to 4K. As you can see, it's almost instantaneous. Lovely. Okay, so here we are, Crash Bandicoot at 4K. Looks really smart. I think on some of these 3D platformers, actually, it looks really good. My gameplay doesn't, but the graphics are fantastic. So I think we'll leave it there. Thanks for sticking with me, YouTube. Hope you've enjoyed it and found this useful. Let me know below if you've got any comments, any questions I'll try and help out. And let me know what else you might like me to have a look at. Please do consider subscribing. The channel is new, but we're certainly, but we'll be ramping up content pretty quickly. I'll be doing an emulation video every week, a new build video once a month, and an old build bits and bobs parts PC build also once a month. So certainly worth subscribing. Plenty more content coming up. Until the next one, go well. <laughs>